So, um, so I was excited to see everybody here. Um, we are, we're going to be working on some writing, um, uh, but we're going to start with, we're going to start with introductions. So um, I'll start. My name is Megan Bro. I am um, the president of the College of Education's chapter of the Alumni Association. I am also a college and career coach for Gear Up and uh, the director of college and career writing programs for the National Writing Project of Acadiana. So this um, incentive is bringing together all of you know the, the things that I love. So I'm really very excited about it. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Dr. Kramer so she can introduce herself. Hi guys, my name is Michelle Kramer and I'm assistant professor at UL in the College of um, Education, Department of Curriculum and Instruction. And I just finished my first year as assistant professor, so it's been very interesting, um, especially these last two months. But I've been involved with the National Writing Project of Acadiana since 2013 um, as a SI member, but now I serve as director of Youth Programming and Research Initiatives. So I'm really excited to be here with you guys. Okay, and now Toby, if you would introduce yourself. Sure. I'm Toby Daspit. Um, I'm twice an alum from UL, 1988 in secondary social studies education, 1993 with the master's in secondary. And I would have got my doctorate from UL, but we didn't have one at the time in education. So I had to go across the swamp. We won't talk about that. But I was fortunate to come back just as Michelle was able to. Um, took me a little longer. I was six years at Western Michigan. And my second year back, I was named director of the National Writing Project of Acadiana. And I directed it for about four and a half years. Tried to go away. I got pulled back as co-director. And I've been doing that since 2010. Um, and in my current role, I'm the interim department head for curriculum and instruction. Um, so Dr. Kramer is uh, one of our new faculty members heading into her second year. So really, really excited to be here and so great to see so many alum, alumni, what's the proper term, Megan? Alumni for everyone. Alumni is plural. plural. I'm an alum, you are alumni. Yes. <laughs> You're an alumnus. I'm an alumnus? Yes. <laughs> okay, I can do that. <laughs> Thank y'all. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead. Um, I'm gonna share my PowerPoint. Let's see if this sends. And this is not okay. So sorry guys. Okay. All right, so we went through introductions. We're gonna talk now about the objectives of this activity, this event. Um, so basically, or the, the main focus here um, is that we're gaining knowledge and awareness of the alumni student recruitment program. We're gonna talk about that. Um, then we're going to reflect on some college experiences, engage in some episodic nonfiction exercises and we're doing all of this in order to cultivate ideas to use in a personal letter to prospective raging Cajuns. So I'm going to start by talking about the student, um, the alumni student recruitment program. This is a really exciting program um, uh, where alumni volunteers are able to write letters to students who have applied to the university, been accepted, but not yet have, but they've not yet registered <coughs> for the university. So um, alumni are matched to students um, who are planning to study um, within their fields or by geographic location. So when you sign up, you can, you can say, um, I want, you know, I want students from this area or um, they'll match by your, your program. Uh, I, whenever I signed up, I specifically asked to, to be matched with Acadiana High School students because as a college and career coach for Gear Up, I am, um, I'm stationed at Acadiana High School. So I really wanna work with, with those students and help them um, to, 
you know, to choose, you know, my home because the University of Louisiana at Lafayette is definitely my home. Um, so um, they alumni in these letters, they share their UL stories with these students. And my hope is that uh, this, this event is going to help you guys to write more personal letters um, to where the students can really connect with what you have to say and then connect with the university. Um, so you have a copy of the PowerPoint and I will send it out to everyone um, who participated again. Um, so I have a link here. It tell, if you wanna learn more about the program, you'll be able to do that. And then I also have a link to where you would go about signing up for the program. Okay, does anybody have any questions about it before we move on? Okay, then I am going to turn it over to Dr. Kramer and she's going to get started with our first exercise. Okay, so we're gonna be doing a little bit of um, what we call episodic nonfiction reflection um, brainstorming. And so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna, uh, before we had officially gotten started, I had asked those of you who are already with us to maybe have a sheet of paper handy. Um, Megan, if you could go to the next slide, that would be fantastic. Awesome. Um, so basically what I'm gonna ask you to do is if you could go ahead and draw something similar to what you see on your screen. Um, it can be shaped the way um, what you see on your screen. I, I did, oh, you can't see mine. Um, mine's more concentric circles um, where it's the same size going out. Um, but what you wanna go ahead and do is write UL in that very center circle because that is gonna be the focus for all of our brainstorming. Then in that next circle, if you go ahead and write professors and then follow with that um, format that we see there, we have classes, places on or around campus, and then finally events and extracurricular activities. So I'll give y'all a second to write that down, but I'll kind of let you know what we're doing um, while you're in the process of creating your graphic organizer. So we're gonna take about four to five minutes um, engaging in some brainstorming and thinking about and reflecting upon your experience as alumni from UL Lafayette, USL, SLI, whatever it may be. Um, so we're going to start and we're grounding all of this in UL, but what you're going to do is you're going to want to think about different professors that were very influential, that were very impactful, very memorable to your time at UL Lafayette. And then you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing for each of the different circles as they go further and further out. And we try to encompass different categories and different types of memories that you might think about, both from the academic perspective, whatever your major was, but then maybe also the social and the enjoyment um, with the extracurriculars and maybe the places on campus as well. And so we're gonna take about a minute for each of these categories. So we'll take about four minutes of brainstorming and writing. And Dr. Daspit and Megan and I will be writing with you as well. And actually Megan is gonna be putting on a brief video. It's, um, it's a little meditative video that the university put out, but it has these great images of campus. And so for those of you who maybe haven't been on campus in a while, we wanted to have that going in the background for you to be thinking about those different um, wonderful memories from UL that you can hopefully take and we're gonna turn that into some further writing later on. So Megan, if, um, I, if everybody had enough time hopefully to write down um, the different categories and I'll go ahead and give you about a minute and tell you and prompt you say, okay, we're about a minute through if you wanna go ahead and move to the next um, category of your circle. So Megan, whenever you're ready to start, that would be fantastic. Um, <clears throat> and like I said, we'll just do some writing for about four minutes and I'll let you know um, when you kind of want to move to the next area. So we'll start out writing about UL and memorable professors from your time here or there, excuse me.
And you may want to think if you have a particular memory that you really associate with that particular individual, you want to jot a little note down to yourself to kind of help you think about that. Okay, we have about one minute that we've gone through. If you haven't moved on to the next category, if you want to go ahead and brainstorm some classes, some classes, some courses, whether an entire course or a specific instance from a class. Okay, now if you want to move on to your next circle, places on or around campus. It can be as specific as you want or more general, whatever stands out to you. Okay, and we have about one minute left if you want to move to that final circle of extracurricular um, organizations or activities and kind of events that you were, were involved with. Okay, if y'all want to go ahead and wrap up your thoughts, take another couple of seconds to jot down your last ideas. Hopefully, um, some of these awesome images from the video spark some things for you. And we're going to be taking this a step further in just a minute with Dr. Daspit and building on this as part of um, our idea generation for our letter writing. So Dr. Daspo, whenever you're ready. All right. Um, wow, I got a lot of things came back to me. I hope um, some things came back to you too. Um, what we're gonna ask you to do first is in each of your, uh, your areas of your circle, so for professors, classes, places, and extracurriculars or um, events, to, to circle, the one that's sort of the most vivid to you, one that you'd like to maybe talk a little bit more about. So let's do that first. Just circle the professor you want to talk more about or an instructor, the class you want to think more about. And when I say think about, I mean, you're going to be writing about it. <laughs> Place.
All right. Now we haven't we haven't told y'all yet, but you all are kind of our guinea pigs tonight for some things we're going to be doing this summer with um, with the high school students that we work with in the Gear Up project, because we're going to have to do a lot of that virtually. So, um, but it's a lot of fun to to sort of write together. So I hope you have a pretty good list here of people and places and events and, and, and clubs or activities. Um, and if you've picked one from each of those four uh, circles, it doesn't matter where you start. I'm going to give you some freedom there. But pick one and you're going to write about it. My advice here is um, it's, a, it's free writing. Don't worry about being grammatically correct. Don't worry about making complete sentences. You'll have time to go back and fix all that when you, if you decide to use some of this for your letters later. But you want to stick and be as vivid and with as much detail as possible about that memory. So for me, Dr. Tom Schoonover in the history department changed my life from that first class when I met him. And I think that's what I'm going to write about. The fact that we had 17 people on day one and next, the next week we had five people. Um, and I was one of those five who stuck it out. And thank goodness I did. So anyway, um, there's no real rules here. It's just to sort of get as much as you can out about the professor, the class, the activity, the place. Um, but the more details you can give, as Megan said earlier, and I think Michelle echoed, the more vivid that memory is the better it's going to be for, for, for folks when you try to tell them about your experiences at, at UL, USL, SLI. So you're going to have about three minutes for each section. I'll give you some gentle prompts along the way. Um, but just write. There are, no one's going to see this but you. So. With that said, there will be a sharing. So sorry, guys. There will be a sharing opportunity, so you will have the option, but you are not required. And so you could share exactly what you write, or you could share, you know, just a summary of what you write, but it's not required. Yes, <laughs> that is true. Thanks for that clarification. And then ultimately, ultimately, a high school student will read some of what you write. Um, but all right, so just pick your first one, maybe figure out what order you want to go in and write. Just number it number one and go. halfway through the first one.
All right, and if you can begin wrapping up, kind of take a deep breath, clear your head and jump to the second area that you want to write about, whether it's a professor, class, place. And go. breath and move on to your third area. Again, try to try to really let that memory come. What do you see? What do you smell? What do you hear, feel, taste?
Another deep breath. And this is your last category, fourth one. Again, think about the sight, sound, smells, things you, all those things that just come to mind and paint that picture. did 12 minutes of straight writing um hopefully about some really interesting things oops my thing's going off megan can you move to the next slide yes thank you so you you just did the first two parts um of what would be uh, a piece of episodic nonfiction. Um, what we would have you do if you were going to just do a piece of episodic nonfiction is to work on your four sections, edit them, you know, clean up the language. Um, as Hemingway said, there's no such thing as writing. There's only rewriting and revision. Um, but you have, a, a you should have at least a tremendous list on your concentric circles page or your circles page, the shell of some narrative, maybe some, some incredible detail and some great sentences already. Um, the thing that holds it together, what makes this work is, first of all, you're writing about you and you know you better than anybody in spite of what your significant other might say. Um, you've got your eight rules. Here's some rules of episodic fiction, but it's a dynamic character. Um, if you were going to write these four, or actually the model um, that we use is from a piece called 10 Things I Never Told You About Coyotes at 10 or 12. Um, so there could be a lot more episodes than just four, but for the sake of time today, we just wanted to kind of get you thinking and generating ideas. But if you were going to put them together, and one of my best friends, this is his favorite form of writing. We get together sometimes and we write episodic fiction together. Um, we do other things, but... Um, 
but episodes vary in length. They're roughly chronological. I don't know about you, but when I reflect back on my 1984 to 1988 days, things get a little jumbled. I'm not exactly sure what happened when I was a freshman or senior. Um, but your single unifying device is the fact that it's happening uh, on or during the time that you were matriculating at UL, USL, SLI. Um, so the metaphor that that we really like here is that um, it's like a slideshow or a music video. It's like snapshots of your time at UL. And I don't know about you, but I think of one thing and start writing about it. And then it brought to mind, oh yeah, she was in that class. Oh, that then they said I should take this professor. And oh, I dropped that class fast. Um, and I really like the last thing from George Orwell is break any of the rules than saying anything outright barbarous. So um, considering you're gonna be working this into a letter, hopefully the ideas that came from today, um, you're gonna need to make that fit the letter and fit the person that you're writing the letter to. So, you know, the biggest rule is there really aren't any rules, <laughs> but you've got a great start. So I'm gonna turn it uh, back over to Dr. Kramer, I believe. Yes, so as we had said earlier, you were not required to share, but we are going to ask if anybody would like to share some of the things you might want to just talk about a general idea of what you were writing about, or if you want to read actually what you had written down for one of the episodes, uh, that would be fantastic. Would anybody like to volunteer to share a little bit of something that they wrote? I'll take that fearful jump. <laughs> Yay! No criticism here. Keep in mind, I've been out of college for 20 years, but going back into school, working on my master's, this is extremely helpful and I could use some private tutoring. <laughs> um, so I'll, I chose to talk about location in my first choice of selection. And so this is what I wrote. When you study, do you need to be in a certain location? I found that the perfect location for me to study while in college and it was Dupre Library. When I close my eyes, I can see myself walking up to the library, knowing exactly where I'm going to sit on the second floor. I can almost smell the library and can visualize my favorite table and surroundings. Studying there my senior year helped me with my academic success those last two semesters. I can feel that. Like, I have the same experience. I get it. Awesome. Anybody else? Brave souls. I want to talk. Um, I just want to mention some of the things that came to mind, if that's okay, Megan. Sure. Um, it, you know, the, the amazing thing for me coming back to UL, and I've been there 16 years now, the College of Education, is how much hasn't changed. Griffin Hall still has five stories. You still need to climb those stairs. Even as faculty, I can't get into that elevator because I'm not faculty there. Uh, <laughs> I remember sad. those history classes, Dr. Schoonover's office on the fifth floor, we would, we would turn papers in. They were due at 6 p.m. Friday and we we're up there at 5.59. Then we'd take the hike over to Old Time Grocery and get a seafood platter on Fridays. Um, Bisbanos, I'm gonna leave those stories. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna tell the high school students everything. Um, <laughs> But I realized how much of the Vermilion, I wrote for the Vermilion. That was a chance thing that happened. Um, Dupre Library definitely has a special place in my heart. Maxim Doucet, which is where I spend most of my life now. Well, I did before the, the virus. Um, so it all sort of came to mind when you made those connections between classes and professors and so many personalities. Um, I mean, who can forget the Rickles, Dr. Pat Rickles, Dr. Milton Rickles. Um, and um, and she, they, she was still there when I came back. And, you know, um, so anyway, I'm hoping some others will share some of the, oh, the student union, the old student union. We used to, I used to hear music. There was, there was a bar, Groucho's was in the student union. You could drink beer in the middle of the day. Um, not that I would ever do that, but you could. So. Would anybody like to share just a summary of some of their ideas? All right. Uh, yeah. I'm, usually, I'm usually not one for sharing, but I'll take a leap of faith. Thank you so much. <laughs> so um, my place was the quad. 
And uh, I put, I loved going to the quad between classes. Uh, it allowed me to see all my friends and hang out with them. It was also a good place to eat lunch. Um, for a class, um, I put uh, the class that really came to mind and Jennifer who just shared, she and I were in the same major at the same time. So some of these memories may be from her too. My favorite classes at UL were the design classes. Uh, I loved all my design classes because I flourished in them. Going into those classes, I did not realize I had a knack for being so creative, but that trait is something I carry with me today. All right, and then I'll go ahead and finish, so I'll be all done. Uh, for, for Professor, um, I put Dr. Kathleen Kelly. She's no longer with us. She's uh, at Florida, but um, I put Dr. Kelly. I loved having Dr. Kelly as a public relations instructor. At the time, she was a formative educator and known throughout the country. I learned a lot from her, and to this day, think about her and some of the tips I picked up from her. And then for extracurricular, like I said, I'll just finish them out so I'll be done together. Extracurricular activities, I put Greek life. Uh, grief life grief, Greek life taught me a lot about myself. In high school, I was sort of an introvert and sort of nerdy. Uh, when I got to USL and joined a frat, I exploded socially. Uh, I met many lifelong friends and contribute many of my successes to Greek life. And that's it. Great, thank you so much for sharing. I can Something do um, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. That's fine. Oh, I was just going to say you made me think I had written about a professor as well. And it's interesting. I wrote, um, so this was about Dr. Edie Myers, who was in the Department of Curriculum and Instruction. And I wrote, the truth is, although I had her in undergrad and remember loving her class, what I really remember about Dr. Myers was how she supported me during my master's program. I hadn't had her as a teacher for four years when I asked her if she would be on my capstone committee. She agreed without hesitation. And I think that's a story that I would like to share with future UL students. This idea that this teacher I had in undergrad who had been amazing had impacted me to the point where when I went back for my master's degree, I wanted her to be on my committee. And even though she hadn't had me in years and I hadn't had her during my master's program, she immediately said yes to being on my committee and wanting to support me. And while that story is true about Dr. Myers, I'm sure a number of us have similar stories about professors supporting us in that capacity. And that's something that I'd like to share with future students. Candace, are you gonna share? Yeah, I was just gonna kind of give a brief thing like Jean-Claude did. Um, so as far as like events and extracurricular activities, I definitely have FOMO. So I was like involved in everything and went to everything. So um, that's definitely one thing I like to talk to um, potential students about um, is, you know, Greek life and all the different organizations that we have. Um, but also um, for kind of goes in with favorite places around campus. Um, you know, the union, we didn't have a bar in our union, but <laughs> I'd love to hear more about that. Um, but, but like the union was where everything happened. Um, every student organization met there. They had the NPHC uh, struts and stuff on the porch. Um, so that was kind of like um, a big thing for me. And then um, but also Cajun Field, um, because, you know, I, you never missed a game. Um, I'm from the time of uh, Coach Bustle was definitely there my freshman year. Um, and so we weren't a winning team, but we like packed out the student section. You had to get in the stadium early to get in the red zone spot to be in the front. Um, and I mean, that continues to alumni. All of my friends that, you know, I made in college we had our first official like tailgate spot as alumni this year. So that was like such a huge deal. Um, we all get together and that kind of stuff. So that's kind of like my favorite places around campus slash extracurricular activities. Thanks so much for sharing. Do we have, I think we have time for one more if somebody wants to go ahead. So I'll do mine. Um, 
I was kind of stalkerish and I already got my list of kids and I know almost all of them and they're from BC, which is right down the road. Um, so one that I was going to focus on is uh, my opportunity that I got to study abroad. Um, being from such a small town, you don't really get to go many different places. Um, and I was so scared to leave, but someone just was like, Kayla, just do it. And so I did it and I don't regret it one bit. Um, you literally got class credit for just studying abroad and meeting new people. And those are some of the best friends that I'll have for the rest of my life. So I think kind of focusing on that and letting them know that it's okay to leave um, and you don't necessarily have to stay home all the time. Great. I really like how you thought about something that was associated with the university, but it gave you an opportunity to kind of step away for a moment and take something back with you. Thank you for sharing. And Megan, I think we'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Awesome. I, I really love hearing the stories about uh, professors. So I'm going to be honest, whenever we were writing, um, I had trouble moving from the first section because I started writing about a professor and you know, the connection I made with that professor. And it's, I think that's just so common at this university. And I, I think it's good for students to be able to hear that as well. Um, so my section was just, it's just about making connections to what we did today to um, the student, uh, to the alumni student recruitment program. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about that, but before, before I do that, I wanted to give um, Miss uh, Jennifer Lemonnier a chance to say hello for the Alumni Association because, you know, um, you know, she's, I, I didn't really know that much about this program before, before I had spoken with her about it. So I, I really like to give her a chance to speak, if that's okay. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Megan. Uh, again, my name is Jennifer Lemonnier. I'm the Executive Director of the Alumni Association and Alumni Affairs. I want to thank my coworkers who are on uh, this call as well. We have uh, Kayla Abair, Tucker Sappington, and John Claude, who are all uh, intricate members of the Alumni Association team, and we couldn't do our club and chapter work without them and promote the association. And thank you, uh, Megan, for spearheading this, not only to promote the Alumni Student Recruitment Writing Program, but to give value to um, the association and what we can offer our alumni. And just sitting here, not only working for the Alumni Association, being a participant, this has touched me, and how um, we are offering value and experiences to alumni and especially in today's age we want to connect and I hope that there's some people on the line that aren't just from Acadiana because we want to make sure that we're reaching our alumni in all areas of, of, of the United States as well as abroad and have them have a way to connect back to the university and be able to give back in some capacity you know we always say time talent or treasure of course we love them to be loyalty fund members and support the alumni association but to be able to support the university through their talent and um, speak about what the education has meant to them and how valuable and how it made an impression on their life but again i just want to thank everyone who is participating on this webinar tonight uh, please go like us on facebook and look at our our web page for the alumni association we'd like to connect with you in any way that would interest you whether it's club or chapter whether it's um, helping us come with a home buyer seminar it could be a social activity you know it's not all about uh, attending a tailgate we have plenty of different opportunities a, a meet the dean a wine and cheese night at the museum we want to know what you want and how we can appeal to you and programming's not just face to face but also virtually so thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak on behalf of the alumni association and thank you all for participating and please share with your friends that you enjoyed this experience. Um, Megan, you're probably gonna post that Facebook pic on of us participating. Yes. Please share that and say connect with the Alumni Association. We, we really wanna um, make an impression and connect people back in whatever way interests them. So thank you very much. Um, I was also I was looking through the participants a second ago. And I also, um, we also, if she's still here. We um, also have Ms. Tracy Oquin, uh, who is the executive director of Gear Up, um, who, and Gear Up is also uh, putting this on. So I wanted to ask if, um, if Ms. Tracy would like to say something on behalf of Gear Up. Ms. Tracy? Hello. Hi, would you like to say something? <laughs> 
Sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm putting I'm her just, on the spot too. She wasn't. You are putting me on the spot. <laughs> That's okay. What a wonderful um, webinar. And, um, and thank you, uh, Jennifer and entire alumni staff and College of Education uh, for putting this on and Megan for the work that that you did to, to help organize this. I am, um, I'm really pulling in and multitasking over here and a number of other projects we have going on, but um, I really, it, it really did strike a chord with me. Um, reminiscing, you know, and thinking about each of the, the, the familiar faces and voices uh, I hear and see on this call uh, and kind of go back with, with Dr. Daspit as one of my student workers and Jennifer <laughs> as a student worker and uh, Jean-Claude, I remember the teacher you, you, were, you spoke about, um, even though I wasn't in marketing, uh, she was a powerful force on our campus. Um, reflecting about my time at the university, just uh, loving football and the stadium and, you know, and, and all of you are, are you know, are such a, a big part of the Raging Cajun spirit. So this is very powerful uh, evening and I'm very excited. I, I know Toby mentioned earlier, it's a, it's a, it's kind of a pilot, but um, great opportunity. I'm um, just envisioning this thing growing. So thank you for uh, making it all happen in partnership with, with the university, with the Alumni Association, Association which I love so dearly and, um, and all of you. Uh, who made this happen. So thank you very much. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. So, um, so my part was just talking about, um, it's just to, to, just to touch on the fact that we, we didn't expect you guys to come in and, and write your letter in an hour. We wanted you guys to really reflect on your college journey and your experiences and, and get to thinking and then have those episodes in mind and let the impact of your, of, of your university experience guide your letter um, so that you can let your story be a gift to, you know, to one of those, those prospective students, those prospective raging Cajuns. Um, I also wanted to mention that whenever you sign up for the alumni student recruitment program, you will get examples of student letters and I have a link to them here. They're, they're really powerful letters. Initially when I heard about it, I thought it was going to be like a template. No, they're not templates. They're, they're students who wrote their strong stories and you hear a lot of the same things, uh, professors, uh, you know, the, the student union, um, you know, Cajun field, things like that. And it's, it's just, we, we have such a unique university. And as alumni, we have the opportunity to, you know, to bring that to light and, and share that story with students. So that's, that's what I'm hoping um, that we'll all be able to do in, in, participating in this program. So, um, so if that, that is all that I have for you here, um, I just want to say thank you to the Alumni Association, to Gear Up, and to the National Writing Project of Acadiana, and then we can use the last, um, the last five minutes to answer questions or uh, chat about anything that, that we talked about um, throughout the webinar. Um, so I'll, I'll open the floor to you guys if um, if that's okay. That's a clarify question. question that I don't. I'm thinking other people may be wondering. Mm -hmm. um, I know some people mentioned that they've already received their information of who they're writing letters to, but if people have not signed up for the letter writing campaign but want to write letters, can they do that? And if so, what would be the process? Okay, so I have, um, if they want to sign up, I actually have the link on this PowerPoint um, and I can click on it here to show you. So, so it's not too late to sign up? No. Okay. No, I think uh, Dr. Daspit said he signed up yesterday. So, <laughs> so that's good. So it's, it's on this page of the Alumni Association's page. Uh, it looks like this and you just give them your information. You see, you give your, your name. Um, and 
your personal information and then they ask you if you have a geographical preference, um, what your degree major was in your graduation, graduation year, um, and any other comments. So this is where I put comments um, because I'm, I'm actually, I'm working on my fourth degree at UL. So UL really is, wow. it's, it's my home. <laughs> like I, I, they can't get rid of me because I, I just love UL that much. And I, you know, I, I put in the comments that I can, you know, I'd like to write to English majors. I'd like to write to psychology majors, education majors, because I've, I've studied all of those areas. And the way I would write my letter to a person who is planning to study English is different from the way that I would write a letter to someone who's planning to study psychology because I feel like I got a different sort of impact in each of those spaces. So, so that's, that's how you would go about signing up. Megan. Yes. I'd like to make a quick comment. When yes. you sign up, we're asking that you commit to a minimum of five letters. Yes. But I do want to say, if you're picking, if you're from Texas and you want anyone who's going from Texas, you're kind of relating your story of, I was a high school student in Texas and your dorm experience and how welcoming that was and maybe residence life. My, my statement is that you do not have to write five different letters. You just have to change the name on the envelope and the name that, that you're writing to. So in essence, you can impact 10 students' lives with the same letter, but the header is, you know, Dear John and John Doe is on the outside. Dear Phil, Phil LeBlanc is on the outside. So it can be the same letter as long as the criteria was for the same for the students, all that major, all that geography. So basically you can hand write the letter or you can run it through your computer and hand sign it, your printer, and it be, 10 different students. So time investment, I don't want you to think, oh my gosh, I have to come up with 10 different letters, but you're making an impact in more student lives the more letters you commit to. Right, I'm sorry, I could see how that, the, my comment could have um, No, 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 it was perfect. <laughs> but the more letters we write, the more students we're impacting. And to give you an idea, last year we had about 60 volunteers and we wrote to 344 students. It was a very new program. Uh, before tonight, we have around 90 volunteers. So if you do the math, you know, you have 90 right to 10 people, you know, uh, we're having 900 students being reached. That's pretty amazing. Fantastic. Awesome. And can I say something real quick, Megan, just to, yes. um, we've been doing a lot of surveys with our students and faculty in the light of where we are with the, the global pandemic. I sort of thought, you know, kids would be like, yay, no more school. That's not what they're saying. They miss us. They miss the connection. And a letter, <laughs> I mean, I've been going through all my old boxes. That's what survived. The emails are fine. They're archived. But those letters, I think, are going to make a huge, huge difference, especially with the stories that I heard tonight. I mean, I, I can't wait. to. Maybe I should put my name down. Can y'all send me some letters? <laughs> um, so. <laughs> Thank you, Toby. It really makes a difference from a student on the fence from going to UL Lafayette or maybe even going to UNO or any other state university. So it does make a difference. Well, thank you all for <laughs> love this idea. I love this. And if we can come up with another writing besides the alumni student recruitment program, I would see that adults, maybe even we could do a target market of people over 60 telling their life story. You know, maybe doing writing is not a small book, but I know Dr. Fisher just wrote a book about his life and he had someone help him write it. But, you know, I know someone approached my dad before he passed away in the nursing home asking to have him write his own story. So people might be interested in that. We can that. definitely work with you on that. Yeah. So I think there's more opportunity here besides just what we're doing. And like I said, I personally, when I wrote the letters last year, it was from a different perspective than this heartfelt message. It felt more robotic, whereas now it feels more passionate. So I did learn something tonight. Thank you. I'm quote you on that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great blurb. Definitely. All right. Anybody else? So we're a minute. We're a minute after seven. So. Uh, if nobody else has any questions or comments or anything like that, then I will, we will bid you adieu. <laughs>
But thank well, you night. guys so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all. Great job. Bye. I'll have a good thank night. You. Thank you. Thanks.